be working on the boss mechanics for the Mario game. I made some changes to the project off screen and I created all the levels. Like I said, there's going to be a total of five levels with one level being hidden. So you'll have to do something to access it. Now, currently the game can finish if we play the final level. And all we have to do, I think the camera needs adjustment, is just to land behind the uh, main boss. Let's just adjust the camera slightly for this scene. There we go, like this. Um, so what we're going to do today is make it so that our enemy can actually attack us in some form of way. Uh, because right now all we have to do is just run um, and jump on top of him and that's it. I also managed to download some sounds, but they will be added later. And once we finish with the boss mechanics, there's going to be a little... Um, I'm just going to do a quick stream of going over the code, going over the project, and then finally we'll have a showcase like how we always do um, after the end of each project. Where are we? There we go. Okay, so let's start off by going into our little boss. Where are we? I decided actually not to change the, um, not that post processing. Um, I didn't, I didn't see the point of adding it. To be honest, uh, I could just, uh, at the same time, I could just replace the textures as well for these specific levels. But again, I think it's fine without. It's, it's a prototype anyway, and making extra assets is not really something I'm into. So I've set up collision for the boss, so we don't have to worry about that. We just need to make the boss uh, perform actions. And the two actions that we will make is shooting. So let's just quickly go into paint. Let's see if I have something that I can make a fireball out of. Uh, probably not. Uh, textures. No, I don't have a fireball. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little stripe like this and I will create a circle like this and then I will create a rectangle like this and maybe rotate um, Be slightly creative with this. Now that I separated these over, we can get rid of that one. Oh, and we can get rid of this one here. Like so. Let's paint this one over. Again, do the same for these ones. It's nothing amazing, but it looks it looks like something. It looks like a texture. It's easy enough to distinguish for us, and that's the only important part for prototyping. So with this done, we can get rid of that. Get rid of that. Just, ah, go back. Just fix these bits here, here, add it here. There you go. <laughs> it looks like some kind of a health bar, to be honest. Uh, okay. And finally here. Now let's add some kind of a little Yes. Little guys like these. There you go. Now this looks way more fiery, if if you can call it that. Um, let's add a little bit of red. Beautiful. With this done, I'm just going to paint the rest. 
No, no, go back. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe actually change them to red. I think the the outside ones will look better as red, or actually even all of them. Oh, go back. Pum 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 pum. Okay, with this done, what I'm gonna do is just quickly save this as, and that's gonna be our fireball. Gonna close this, go into GIMP, and I'm just gonna play an alpha channel. <laughs> um, either way, if we go back to the code, so what we will wanna have is, of course, something to pull our fireballs. So we will have a private pooling, and that's gonna be our fireball pool. We're going to make it a serializable field. Now we want to have a reference to our rigid body, so we'll go private rigid body to drb. And of course, we'll just do start rb is equal to this dot game object, this dot get component rigid body to d, like so. There we go. Um, either way, now that GIMP has finally loaded, we're just going to quickly grab the uh, fire icon, drag it in. Uh, click, right click, add alpha selection, use the fuzzy tool, remove the white so we have a transparency, and then I'm just going to export it as fireball again. Yep, I want to replace it. Export, and now we have ourselves a fireball texture. So drag it into the project, set it as a 2D asset, like so. And now let's create an actually let's create a 2D object and it's gonna be a, a sprite. Dragging the fireball in a bit too big. Uh, give it a box collider. 2D. A little bit too big. I'm gonna scale it so it's um it's not as bad for the player. I'm going to make it slightly easier for the player to dodge, uh, like this. Um, and then that's it for now. Let's call it Fireball and add it to our prefabs, enemies, like so. Delete it. We'll add code to it in a minute. Uh, if we now go into our final boss, let's drag it at the bottom side. Don't forget where it is. We need to have a pulling script on him, which will be attached here. And we're just going to put some fireballs here, make it spawn few at the start. Um, with this done, oh yeah, I actually wanted to show, nah, never mind. Um, so we have this, so there you go. So spawn allows us to use spawn fireballs. And then we'll have here with the body. Mm. Now what currently happens is if we press play, if we collide with the enemy, it'll give us a game over. <laughs> Was weird. We didn't spawn the uh, death animation, so that looks like a bug. Oh, it did spawn it, but I guess it just. What happened to you? Where are you? Show yourself. That's so strange. It's like the death animation doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't have a um, collision anymore. Let's check different scenes. Oh, oh, so I must have removed the def model from... Where are we? From the def animation for some reason. So let's just quickly click on our player. And just to duplicate this one, drag it here. Drag it to the def animation, set it as 0, 0, 0. And attach the uh, material, actually. Go here, attach, which I'm gonna, there you go, the see through. There we go. Now that should be fine if we try to play. 
There we go. Better. Um, okay, so with this done, so we want the boss to do two things. One is jump, and the other one is to um, to fire fireballs. So let's first do the jump. And the easiest way to do that is we can look at our player controller. So we have two scripts that handle player controller. It just, this is the first one and this is the second one. So what we kind of want to do is we want to automate the player input. So first we need to check if it's grounded. And the way we check for grounded is with this little trigger here. We could actually also attach this script straight away to the enemy, I think. Let's see if there's going to be any issues. No, nah, there's going to be issues because I've uh, this script is not standalone. It requires you to have certain components. Um, can I somehow make it? Yeah, let's just copy it. It's going to be easier that way. So let's make an update function and just put this entire function in here. And that's going to give us, we don't need that. Mm, or do we do it differently? Um, let me think, what would be the easiest? How do we do it for an enemy actually? Where are we? Enemy. I think enemy controller has a simplest way of doing it. Yep. I think this would be the better way of doing it. It's quicker. What do we have here? So we have a cast array cast. Um, we have a mask. Yeah. And then we just set the boolean to is grounded based on the little collider. So. Yep, that sounds way better to do. Could we actually use the enemy controller for our, or will they no, Will they automatically start now? Because they're going to automatically start walking. So no point. OK, so we need some variables just like in here. So we will need our, there we go. We will need definitely these guys. Where is the little sign? So we'll need this. We will definitely need that one. Where are we? And the only f direction we don't actually need direction. We, oh, we actually don't need this one at all. Don't need this either. So what we actually all need to do is check if it's grounded. If it's grounded, that's when we will perform the jump. And that's it. Um, so we don't need the offset for this. We will just do down. And there is no need for any alternative uh, condition either. This is all that we really need. So let's make this, what's it called? Oh, it already is. So is grounded is already showing. So let's see how this is going to work. Because I did, because uh, at this point we should have the core functionality of going down. What we have to do is just the jump mechanic. So if I click on our boss and I go into, ah, we didn't set the mask. If we just do ground, I'm just going to increase this to one for now. I actually don't know how big it should be. OK, so it's not grounded. What if we increase that? Five, two, OK. So two is our magical number, or is it? Let's move him up. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. It works as anticipated. I'm just going to remove now these guys, because we actually don't need to see it. We know the values. Um, 
So what we're going to do next is we need the ability to jump. And if we look at the character, jumping is essentially just adding the uh, force to our rigid body. So if we look at this code here, what we are going to do is go into our what we'll do is we'll make a private void jump. And we'll just do this. Of course, we want to change it to however we named it here. And jump force, that would be private float jump force. And let's just set it to 10 for now. Let's actually make it serializable so we can control it. And this will keep adding jump. So what's going to happen is if is grounded is equal to true. So if we are on the ground, then we just jump. Like so. And of course, this will automatically flip it to false after we jump because we'll be already in the midair. So we will no longer have to check for that. So let's see if we can get him to start jumping. He's jumping a little bit too high, but yeah, he is jumping every time straight away um, let's nerf down the jump so he don't jump that high constantly where are we so the jump we want where are we jump 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 okay that sounds about right so let's do 8.7 and just make it private so 8.7f will do what's good. And now we have the jumping mechanic uh, for the boss, which is really all we really need. And next we need to start shooting the fire pulse. So the easiest way to do that would be to just make a coroutine that loops constantly over a specific amount of time. Um, let's just change this so it's not as in the way. Um, so jumping of the constant jumping of the enemy boss um, then let's make a private ie numerator and let's call this a fire fireballs or shoot fireballs shoot fireballs like so I'm just going to make a yield return normal now, not to have any errors popping up. And in start, the first thing we'll do is we'll just start the coroutine and we'll do shoot fireballs. Um, well, there we go. So we have this, we have this. And how do we want to shoot? We, I guess we will shoot randomly. There is no need to determine whenever we want to jump. Uh, up and down, so adds force to our rigid body in order to jump upward. It's a bit weird to say upward, but I guess you can jump diagonally as well. How strong the jump will be. Um, Initializes jumping and shooting like so. Handles movement, movement and a attack of the final boss in the game like so. So what's going to happen is we will essentially have an infinite loop. So let's create a while loop while true. That means it's always going to happen, and this will no longer be accessible. We still need to yield, so let's do return new, wait for a second. Wait for it. Right, so we will have a set amount of time that we wait between each shoot. And let's create a new float, private float, and this is going to be called the fire rate. And let's set it to something like two seconds for now. So how often we fire a fireball? Actually, two is actually extremely short. So let's change it to three. And then in here, we just put fire rate down. Um, in fact, we're going to put this at the start of our coroutine rather than at the end. 
Mm, no. Because we don't want to fire straight away when the player spawns in. We want to give him some time. So what I'll do first is... So what we do in order to spawn our fireball is we essentially just cast a game object. So we do game object and then give it a name. So let's just call it fireball. And we're going to equal it to a um, pool to our pooling script. So fireball dot and then we have this function called get pool object. And what we then have to do is have a point from which we spawn the fireballs. So if we click on our boss, let's just say we can have a constant point or we can have the point move with the boss. Uh, I think it's going to be more fun if, let's see, no, so we will want the player to jump underneath. That means we're going to have a, a static point on the map. So I'm just going to create a cube for now so I can visualize it. And now I can remove the mesh and the, just keep it as an empty game object. Set this as a zero. So we will spawn our fireballs exactly from this point onwards, and we, let's call this the fireball spawn location, like so. And we need to store this for our enemy. So let's go here and create a private transform, and this is going to be our fireball spawn location, like this. I'm actually going to change the way it faces and then make the fireball fly only in a straightforward line. So if we look at the blue, that's the forward position. And we kind of just want to make it move in the right direction. Where is the blue? That's up. No. 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 180? No. OK. Oh, minus 90 on. In the way okay uh, so with this we have this which will keep going forward we actually have a script which makes things go forward so we can easily copy that for um, let's just nullify everything for now okay so anyways um, we also want to play a sound uh, every time we fire a fireball so let's just do a serializable and let's just do a private audio source uh, fireball sound. And what's going to happen is, so we spawn our fireball, we make the fireball sound. So we're just going to do fireball sound dot play. That will just play the sound out right here. And what we also want to do with the fireball, we're going to do fireball.transform.position, and we're going to make it equal to our fireball spawn location, like so. And we will then set it to, to true, so it can start flying. And that will keep happening every time, every uh, of our fire rate, which is every three seconds. Okay, like so. And now we have all of the code done, I believe. Let's just come in here. So, uh, constantly spawns fireballs at the given location based on fire rate, like so. And let's give it a try. Of course, the fireball hasn't been coded yet itself. So, we'll have to do without it. Oh, we didn't actually assign anything. So let's go into our final boss, attach our final location. Let's create a audio source. And let's drag, look for the sounds that we have. Where is it? Uh, materials, no, audio. I actually want to add a new folder for music. I actually have the music, I just haven't added it. It will be available in the final version. I'll also have the links to where I get them from as well. As always. Um, where do you go? That's the one we want.
Um, it really sounds bad. Um, where are we? So, fire. We want to change this to 2D. We are not doing, it's a 2D game. It doesn't make sense to not do any other type of sounds. Some of these sounds are not going to be used, by the way, but I'm still going to keep them in the project. There's no point in removing them, to be honest. Um, so with this, I believe every instance has been attached. Apart from the, um, there you go. Mm, we're still having a missing reference. And that is probably because a, our pulling, because of script execution order. So let's just quickly work on that and add our boss controller after. Actually, we want to give the player a little bit of time, probably as well anyway. So before we go into this loop, we're just going to yield return you wait for seconds. And you're just going to put like a flat second and a half before we start shooting at all. Okay, so it does spawn, it currently has collision, which is weird. Um, but yeah, well, smart, what matters is that it works and now we can make it work properly. So first we're just gonna set it as trigger. We don't need to do anything else in here so we can close this and this. And like I said, we do have a platform script. This is actually way too big right now. Um, I wanna make it smaller. There we go, like this. Let's see how it looks. Maybe a little bit bigger. Okay. Now that we have this, um, let's look at some other scripts, um, to be exact, this script, and I'll explain. So what happens here is essentially all we do is just transform it forward at the speed and we can actually just duplicate it, use this script for um, the fireball. There is no need to actually create a new script for this. Um, what we just have to do is actually look at our forward vector. Where is the forward? Um, yeah, that's going to be a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack this prefab real quick. I'm going to create an empty game object. And I'm going to move the game object out of here. So this is going to be our fireball holder. Now the fireball holder has to, there you go. Let's set it like this and drag in our fireball inside. And now that we have this, this is so the, we always face it towards the correct forward. Now we can replace it. I do feel like it's not then replace it properly. So let's just do this real quick. Now, the script that we are looking at is the forward platform. So platform, forward motion, forward. We might have to make this a serializable field just to be able to change the speed value for this specific function. And actually, we might actually have to go back to the boss fight for one more change. Where are we? Uh, the pulling object is, of course, missing now. Actually, we need one more script, and that's to detect collision with the player. But, um, oh yeah, the change that we needed to do was we didn't don't change the rotation currently of the object on spawn, and that's something that we do have to do. So let's just do fireball that transform the rotation is equal to fireball spawn location dot rotation like so, and that's done. And now let's see if there's any script that we can take for determining collision between our player. So we have this, and I believe this is good enough. Now, all of the other guys will not be useful at all, which is OK. But yeah, so let's just do enemy collision. I believe all the other values can stay f well unused, because the only one that we actually care about is this one here. Um, how does the the boss handle collision. 
I guess, oh, we're just using the out of bounds. So there you go. I use the same script for out of bounds for the boss. Um, let's give this a try, see if it works. Wait. Um, okay, so slight problem. Uh, we're parenting, which we don't kind of want to do. So I'm just going to put the pulling in here instead. <laughs> because it's parented, it's moving with the parent. And that's not something we want. So there we go. Now it should be different. It's a bit too slow, so I'm just going to increase the speed. And the rate is too often. Or maybe not. Maybe the rate is good. Or is it not? I don't know. Let's play around with the speed for now. Where are we? Oh, it's a constant. Okay, so let's remove the fact that it's a constant. So we can modify it. And change this to a free. Also, one thing I want to do is I want to disable on uh, the sound being played on start. You actually only want to play it when it's meant to be played. Okay, so there you go. All it takes to win is to do that, which is good enough. That's actually great for our final fight. And with this, let me just double check our list of to dos. Uh, Mario notes. There's not a lot left here in the notes. So, add boss jump, fire image style with sound, and theme music. Yeah, I'm just going to drag the theme mu music uh, in a second off screen because I actually don't know where I've put them. Um, so, with this, the project is now complete. Um, I'm not going to play it just yet. I'm going to be back in 10 minutes with. Um, and then I'm going to go over every single class, which will sum up the entire project. And then afterwards, we're just going to record a showcase. Well, no, afterwards, I need to get it tested. And once it's tested, I'm going to do a quick five minute stream for the showcase. So that's it for now. I'll be back in 10 minutes where we can go over all the code and remove any unnecessary pieces of code.